Hello, welcome to this video in the series of videos titled Power Series. We're looking at Power Series, trying to figure out how to tie a function to its Power Series representation. In the previous video, we introduced the idea and looked at the geometric series and how from it we can get other series. And so we took its derivative and we took its, its uh, an integral of not exactly this one, but one over one plus X. And in this video, what we want to do is build up the derivative of arctan and then integrate it so we can get a power series for arctan. You know the derivative of arctan, right? 1 over 1 plus x squared. So we're going to alter the 1 over 1 minus x algebraically by looking at it and seeing what the difference is between what we have and what we want. We have one on top, we have one on the bottom, and we have a plus sign where there should be a minus. So what do we do? We make it a minus by making the plus subtracting a negative. Now that's an x squared there. Once you're in this format, one over one minus something, it's exactly that something that takes the place of all those x's there. So instead of 1 plus x, it's 1 minus x squared. Instead of plus x squared, it's going to be minus x squared squared, and so on. In the summation, instead of x to the n, it's going to be minus x squared to the n. It'll keep the same interval of convergence. Simplifying, what we have is 1 minus x squared plus x fourth minus x fifth, and so on, with the Summation, we can break it apart and have the alternating term minus 1 to the n and then the x term x to the 2n. This is the power series for 1 over 1 plus x squared. Not worthy of getting its own place on the list of library of functions that we know the power series representation of. But this guy's integral is worthy of making the list. We integrate the function. We can integrate term by term. We can integrate the series. All right. Well, you know, integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared is arctan. And so the left-hand integral is arctan of x plus a random constant. If we integrate the individual terms, we'll get an x minus x cubed over 3 plus x fifth over 5 minus x seventh over 7. We'll get the odd powers divided by the exact matching odd number. Alternating in signs starting with a plus. And each one of them has a plus C on it, so we can just combine them all together. As far as the summation goes, you just keep the summation, you keep the alternating, and you focus on the X term, and you raise it up by 1, divide by the same thing. Power rule in reverse. X to the 2N plus 1 over 2N plus 1. It will still be convergent for everything between minus 1 and 1. Um, and we're going to find out that we can check the endpoints and see that it's actually a uh, convergent uh, at, at both of the endpoints. This plus C1, this plus C2, we can combine it to just be plus C. If you want to know what C is, you plug in the center of the series. How do you know what the center of the series is? Uh, what's X raised to, or what, what term is raised to the end? What X term is raised to the end? And you got to figure out what makes that term zero. So it's just going to be X equals zero is the center here. Plug it in. Why? because it'll kill all those terms that have x's in them. It actually just gives you that the fact that the, um, the c is the arctan of 0. And hopefully you know the arctan of 0 is a 0. So it turns out that here, I can't say always, but it turns out that here the constant is just 0. So we did it. We have the arctan of x represented by this power series. We have the first four non-zero terms and as a technicality, it's convergent at the endpoints. Uh, well, conditionally convergent, if you all want to get really technical. Now, this is number four on our list. Let's go to the list. We start with the geometric series, convergent for any x's between minus one and one. We took its derivative to get one over one minus x quantity um, squared power series representation shares the same interval. Then we altered 1 over 1 minus x by making it 1 over 1 plus x and then integrated it to get the natural log power series. 
And if you check the endpoints there, you'll get conditional convergence on the endpoints for both of them, just like with the Arctan series. This is half of the ones we'll need. We'll get about eight of them. The other four will come from Taylor series. And so it's our job to take these now and use them in applications to build others' uh, functions. And so here's just a small example. We'll do a more difficult example in another video. But I want to be able to represent the function as a power series. I'm not quite concerned about the interval of convergence. If the question doesn't say it, don't worry about taking the extra step and going to find it. Um, and so this isn't exactly one of the ones that were on the list, but it has the flavor of one of the ones that was on the list. If you have the quantity squared in the denominator, if you go back to the list, it's got to be the second one. Quantity squared in the denominator. Except you don't have a one in the numerator. You don't have a one in the denominator. What you have for your function, x cubed in the numerator, factor it out. Two in the place of the one that's in the denominator, Factor it out. Be careful with this guy. You see, the whole quantity is squared. So when you take it out, it's still inside the square. So when it comes all the way out, it actually comes out as a 4. And now we have the exact same format as number 2 on the list. 1 over the quantity of 1 minus something squared. Our something's not an x. And we have to multiply by x cubed over 4, but that's okay. All we need to do is rip out the x's in number 2 on the list and put in x over 2's. So instead of uh, 1 plus 2x, we'll have 1 plus 2 times x over 2, plus 3 times x over 2 quantity squared, plus 4 times x over 2 quantity cubed. Don't forget though, we have to multiply by x cubed over four. In the summation, we have, um, instead of x to the n minus one, we have x over two to the n minus one. We just gotta simplify this and we're done. Let's distribute in. Uh, go back to the original function, x cubed over three, uh, x cubed over two minus x quantity squared. And let's distribute the x cubed over 4 in. See how those 2's cancel in the second term there? And in the fourth term, we're going to have some cancellation as well. So we end up with the four terms, uh, x cubed over 4, x fourth over 4, 3x fifth over 16, x sixth over 8. And it goes on forever. It's all positive. In the summation, we can take the x cubed over 4 and bring it in. But we can do more than just bring it in we can then incorporate it with the other parts that are already in there. You already have x who's raised to the n minus one, and you are multiplying it by x to the three. What do you do with that? You add the exponents, which ends up as x to the n plus two. Okay, good. And then you can just take off the two to the n minus one, and you have exactly your power series for your function f of x, who is x cubed over the quantity of 2 minus x that is squared. And if we wanted to, we could find the interval of convergence and all that too. All right, so we'll do more of this. This isn't an easy question, okay? But it's about manipulating one of the list, one of the options that are on your list of right now four different functions and their power series representation picking the right one and manipulating it algebraically. In the next video, we'll manipulate it first with algebra and then we'll hit it with some calculus. All right, thank you. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this, this journey of calculus too, amongst other things. And ask me any questions if you like. Uh, comment down below, like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.